Bryson for ALS channel. Today we're going to be installing a DSC Sport Controller, which is a magnetic ride control uh, aftermarket device that allows you to tune and also gives you greater capability from your existing factory equipped Magna Ride car. So, uh, magnetic ride control is available in Porsches, uh, several of the Chevrolet cars, including the Camaro, Corvette, and Cadillac. And the the way that those magnetic dampeners work is there's a uh, uh, electro viscous fluid that actually when a charge is put through the fluid these magnetic particles align or go against the the movement of the shock and so basically depending on the electronic signal to the shock determines how that shock dampens now a shock is not a spring so the, the actual suspension load is, is mainly taken up by the, by the spring still, but the dampeners can have a critical impact to how your car handles in terms of oversteer and understeer. So we're gonna be installing a DSC Sport Controller in Ron's, uh, I believe it's a 2019 ZL1. It is not a ZL1 1LE. Those cars do not have the magnetic ride control. We'll, we'll put it in, it, it just installs in the trunk in place of the stock unit. We'll set it up with, uh, we'll level, we'll zero out the dampener ride height. We'll also load a tune into the car that I've been using on the track. So I've been running a DSC Sport Controller for nearly three years. I've kind of gone through their beta testing. Um, it's, it's a pretty solid product now. The main benefits are that you not only does it change the control strategy from the factory controller, which is mainly based off of wheel position, it the DSC Sport Controller communicates with the CAN bus system in the car. And so it gets throttle, brake, steering. Also, it has an accelerometer in it, so it uses G-forces. And so it turns a very reactive system into what they call an active system. So what I've noticed in my own personal experience is that the car is much more stable under heavy braking. Um, it also can, can go through transitions better. So the unit also has a G limit, which under that limit, the, the shocks are in a very comfortable setting. And so on the street, when you're not pulling any noticeable G forces, you have a very Cadillac smooth ride. It's actually a smoother ride than the factory controller. But as soon as you exceed that limit, the, the shocks will stiffen up. It'll go to a different set of load tables and then you'll get into basically whatever your race settings are, or each mode, in fact. So my, my car has, and Ron's car has, Turing Sport and track settings. You can set up different shock settings for each of those modes. Additionally, there's a drag kind of launch mode that also can help in autocross or in time trials where you're doing track sprints or just at the drag strip, where you hit the brake, blip the throttle, or in a manual transmission car, you put it in the clutch, blip the throttle, and then it goes into a separate shock setting where it's going to allow the front of the car to rise up very quickly and it'll sit, stay in that setting for a defined period of time and then go back to the standard settings. And I found that to be highly effective on the drag strip. Hey, so we're over here at Ron's garage. We've had a really unstable weather pattern here in Charlotte. So we've had thunderstorms, rain, thunderstorms, and he's on Goodyear 3R. So uh, I, I came over here and we'll, uh, we'll film the rest of the install here in his place rather than at, at my garage. So what we'll do is we'll remove the interior uh, trunk panels uh, we'll get access to the where the the stock factory shock controller is we'll remove the amplifier above it we'll put the new module in and then we'll run a 15 foot usb cable uh, through the passenger side of the car through the trunk into the passenger compartment and that way we'll be able to program it from the uh, passenger compartment not outside the vehicle so so yeah open it up and so oh they're gold now Mine's black. So on the end of it, right here, is where the USB cable goes. So we'll, and we'll probably want to uh, electrical tape it on 
because it can potentially vibrate out. Okay. here it's 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 this part pushes it uh, yeah swivels it, it actually out. swivels out and then you just want to make sure that you pull it out straight you can potentially bend the pins but there's a lock there's a lock that you yeah there's a right there and there's a, a release there you go and then you just pull straight out and the module should slide towards the connector. All right. There you go. Yeah. And then you just want to connect, connect it very slowly. And then after you get the engagement, then when you pull, when you, yeah, make sure it's in. There you go. That's all there is to it. Easy peasy. Alright, All right, Ron, I'm pulling it through. Alright, you're good. Still got a ways. Keep going. Alright, that's it. That's it? Yeah. I'll give you some slack back. And then it's it's uh I can I can just route it right in the crease here, the hinge crease of the seat. So I don't know if is there uh can you zip tie it to the uh wiring harness? Close, close to the uh, the back of the seat here. Um, maybe. Okay. I think I'll be able to get enough on here. Though. So we got the DSC Sport controller installed. Uh, we've got the USB cable installed and connected to the laptop. We have started the DSC tuner software. So the the first thing you're going to do is go to File, Vehicle Type and then come down to Camaro 6 Gen. All right, and then you go to Tools, and you're going to do Read All. And if there's something wrong with the controller, if there's something wrong with the cable, this will fail. So we'll to begin, device is not responding correctly, check to make sure the port is set. Okay, so don't freak out. <laughs> We're going to go to close this. We're going to go tools and where is it? tools serial settings. It's set at COM3 right now. Well, that's the only. Let's try this again. So we're going to disconnect the USB. Reconnect USB. In a panic, they try to pull the plug. Tools. Read all. Begin. Ah, there we go. All right. No problem. All. I don't know exactly what I did there, but it's now working. So you can see it's reading everything, and this is how you start to modify the tables. Okay, so it's completed, we'll close, and you can see, all right, so there are multiple parameters here. The main thing to watch out for is, this is the yellow, the background is yellow, okay? And so you go settings, and you can see show edit tables for Turing, Sport, and Track. So we really don't want to mess with the Turing settings, because yellow is Turing, if we go to chassis track, all of a sudden, boom, blue. Okay, so that's what we want to, to do. And then there's also a zero travel. And so we want to select zero travel, set ride height sensors to zero, yes. 
And so there, there all the settings are. So then we can go back and the only table I like to mess with, so there is a very complex G load table right here. Uh, DSC has worked on track and perfected this. If you're a very advanced user, you can mess with it. I don't mess with it. The only table I mess with is this shock calibration table. And it goes from zero to 100%. And it's, it has left front, right front, left rear, right rear. And you can see in this cell, the left front is ca calibrated at 1100 milliamps. And that's 1100 milliamps. So DSC has not put in their latest calibration here. And I just know that from, uh, from history. So the new calibration actually has like 1700 milliamps in the top setting. So we're gonna have to load a file. So we're gonna go file open would you like change uh yes we're gonna save this file so ron will have it we have saved that now we're gonna go file open and we're gonna go to my files And then I've got this 2020 February calibration, which is my latest calibration. We're gonna open that. And so you can see now we have 1725. So that's significantly higher shock cal, but in this tune, they've significantly changed this G-Force table. So they all work together. So it's gonna to have a totally different uh, G-Force table. We've got a different shock calibration. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna do file. We're gonna do write all and begin. Okay, so if the car is under steering or over steering, right? So you can do two things. So, so for understeer, you can either soften the front or you can stiffen the rear. So you want it, it so depending on where you want to shift the weight balance, basically you want to increase grip on that side of the car by, by softening where you want more traction. So right now we have on this, Table, that's the Excel table. We'll go shock calibration table. You'll see that we have 720 or 1725 milliamps at the 100% on the front, and we've got 1400 milliamps on the rear. And so, if it say if you get to the track and you're getting understeer, what you would do is so we got to, this is kind of complicated. You got to remember what these settings are. So it's, it's a hundred and a zero and it's 1725 in the top. And so we're going to clear all. Yes. So now you have nothing in here. So we're going to go, we're going to put a hundred back in the, this cell. And then you're gonna have to hit update, 100, update. And so say we wanted to go softer in the front. Now, 25 milliamps will make a difference. So going from 1725 to 1700 is a big, it is a bigger change than you think. So we're gonna go, so say you're getting understeer, you wanted to soften the front, it was 1700, or 1725, we'll go to 1700, we'll do update. You have to do it for the right front as well. 1700 update. And then the, we're, we're gonna leave the rear the same because we don't, we wanna just soften the front. So update and 
update. And then since we have the zero and the hundred filled, then we do fill empty. Yes. Are you sure you want to fill all zero values? Yes. And then it'll fill in the chart in a linear fashion from 0% to 100%. But that is not very easy to do or very quick to do if you're right. just making a shot change. So we'll write all, begin, let it go through, let it go all the way to 100%, and then uh, we'll save this file to Ron's copy and we'll be done. So I hope you uh, learned something. Obviously the DSC Sports software is fairly complicated, so it's not for a novice user. Also, when you, if you get into suspension tuning, uh, you need to know what you're doing uh, in order to maximize the use of this product. But it is a great product. It really makes it from a reactive system to an active system like they advertise, and it will give improved handling and driver feedback. So hope you enjoyed the video. As always, please like and subscribe. If you have some different opinions, leave them in the comments below. Thank you, and we'll see you on the next video.